Hello. So a student requested to explain how you would find the direction vector of a line. And the example that they gave me was y equals 2x minus 1. So as you can see there, I went ahead and graphed the function, labeled a few points. So I have a y-intercept of negative 1 with a slope of 2. So to find the direction vector, which I will call v, this is basically a vector that points in the same direction as the line. And you can kind of draw a vector in any position along the line because it doesn't really change its direction and it doesn't really change its orientation. So I'm going to arbitrarily choose that we start at point A. And I'll kind of do this in red to make it stand out. So at point A. And let's say that we're picking a vector that points to B. Because just looking at that, I can tell that this directional vector points in the same direction as the line. So I need a vector that goes from A to B. So in this case, V is the vector AB right, from A to B. So now it's really how do we find a vector that points from A to B. So you take your terminal point, which in this case is B, at the location 1, 1. And then you subtract the initial point. Now my initial point in this case is A, which is located at 0, negative 1. Now we just simplify this. So x components combine with x components. So 1 minus 0 would be 1. And this becomes an official vector. So it would be 1 i hat. Then y components go with y components. So 1 minus negative 1 would make a positive 2. And that's also a vector component. So it's officially j hat. So this would be a vector that points in the same direction as the line. Right? So this is kind of nice for a two-dimensional system. Now, did we have to choose points A and B? No. We could have chosen a vector that points from B to C. So I'll kind of draw that one in red to make it stand out again. So if I chose the vector from B to C, right, this should have the same length as A to B, and it points in the same direction. So it doesn't really matter which two points you choose. Your vector will be the same. So let's see how that works. So let's say instead of AB, we chose the vector from B to C. Once again, we take our terminal point, which this time is C, and it looks like that's located at three, or uh, two, three, sorry. So two, three, minus my initial point, which in this case is B, that would be one, one. X component with X component, that would give me two minus one, which is one, I hat. Then three minus one would be two, J hat. And if you look carefully, it's the exact same vector. Now, there is a shortcut to doing this if you don't feel like writing out the terminal point minus the initial point. If you look at what the slope was of the line, so this is kind of a different perspective. So the slope of the line was 2, right? Most students can look at y equals 2x minus 1 and identify that the slope is 2. Well, we know that slope is usually rise over run. The rise is your y component. So this is your y component. And then the one that's on the bottom, that's your x component. Right? It tells you how far up and how far to the right to go when you draw additional points. So it's not a coincidence that if you look at your direction vector, the y component of your direction vector is 2, and the x component of your direction vector is 1, just like slope. So you can kind of see the direction vector just from the slope alone. Right? So if I said, let's call v our direction vector, I see that 1 is the x component, so it would be i hat. I see that 2 is the y component, so that would be j hat. All right, so a couple different ways for you to find for the direction vector. You can choose two arbitrary points along the line, then take the terminal point minus the initial point, and you can do that for any two points that you see. Then you could use slope, right? Slope is rise over run, so y component over x component. It should agree with finding the direction vector using two points. Now, the only thing to be a little bit careful about here is that because this direction vector points from A to B and from B to C, because that's what I chose arbitrarily, that means that this line isn't going down and to the left. So if you see some students will kind of write like that arrow, because that's what they're used to when they draw lines, but technically that arrow down and to the left shouldn't be there, right? Because you're actually going up and to the right. The only way you could form vectors down and to the left that way is if you chose a negative direction vector. That way it would point down and to the left. Hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.